again. So the audio is going to be recorded, and we'll start the slideshow. Let me see here. Okay. All right. As I said, we're going over wireless networking, as you know now, right? <laughs> we are? All right. Um, all right. So we got wireless networks, WLANs, right? And wired and wireless signals share some of the same similarities, right? We all um, use the same layer three and higher protocols, right? But layer one and two are going to be different than wired, right? Uh, because there's no wire in a wireless. So. All right. Um, so then we have different spectrums. What, what are our two most common spectrums that we deal with? What's that? Magnetic spectrum. Well, uh, on our spectrum scale here, right? You know, what, which, which range are we? What 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 what's oh, Wi-Fi? Two point four. Two point four and five five gigahertz, right? Two point four and five gigahertz is uh, Wi-Fi, right? But we have all these other um, different uh, spectrums, right? So you have the RFID and and uh, all these uh, Z waves and all this other stuff we'll get into, but they use different frequencies to communicate, right? Uh, All right, who's got slide six in group one? Okay. So, channel management, most wireless devices implement one of the two technologies to take advantage of, to take advantage of the frequencies within its band to avoid interference. FHSS, frequency hopping spread spectrum, short bursts of data are transmitted on a particular frequency within the band, and the next burst goes to the next frequency in the sequence. D triple S data streams are divided and encoded into small chunks, which are spread all over the available frequencies. How each wireless standard in the 24, uh, 2.4 gigahertz range uses its bands. Wi-Fi uses D triple S in the United States. Each channel is 20 megahertz wide. Bluetooth uses FHSS to take advantage of the 79 channels allocated to the Bluetooth band. Zigbee uses D triple S and 16 channels. Amp Plus uses fixed, a fixed frequency and therefore does not use D triple S or FHSS. Each technology has a procedure to follow when it senses a collision. Wow, excellent. So that was very, very good uh, explanation. So, right, so the frequency hopping, right, it, it hops and, and goes over the, the, the uh, spectrum. Whereas DSS takes a chunk of it and spreads across that, right? Um, and so I believe you said there were 79 uh, FHS channels, but there's three channels with DSS, right? So it's a big difference, right? So it's a bigger chunk of the spectrum um, for DSS. Um, and so it has, has, has different uh, uses, right? So that's for your Wi-Fi and your higher bandwidth, right? I actually did the frequency hopping when I had my my WISP, my wireless ISP years and years ago. Um, but of course, that was before the real big jump in speeds, right? Because uh, they, they even the book says that two uh, megs uh, frequency hopping actually has a cost benefit and it's, it's also more secure. That's why I went with frequency hopping because it's never staying on a channel for any long, long length of time. It was um, developed for uh, security in its mind. So that's why I went with the frequency hopping um, over the DSS. Um, and I only had to beat dial up. So two days at the time was <laughs> much better than 56K. So everybody was just in love with two megs. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, so there are, there are major differences between them. Um, obviously DSS went out for the uh, Wi-Fi though. Um, and we'll get into how the wireless ISP kind of works, but all right. So um, I guess actually we'll go over a little bit. So we got uh, antennas, right? So everybody's seen their home router with the little antennas, right? Um, they 
um, produce a little uh, extra uh, push uh, for the signal, right? Um, because the our Wi-Fi is limited to four watts of power, and this is probably way more information you ever need to know, but um, but you can actually have with your radio transmitter, even if it's like a 250 milliwatt amp uh, radio, with the different antennas, you could actually push out over four watts because of the gain that you get from the antenna gains. And uh, um, so, you, you know, the types of antennas you use can make a difference on your signals and that, and we'll get into that um, as well. Let's see here. All right, number eight, group two. Sure. Okay. Perfect. And so I, I and I always have to cut myself on, on the last slide. I almost went over her slide, so I have to be careful. I, I try to do that. But so this is good information on the antennas, right? So we have two different types of antennas: the unidirectional and the omnidirectional. All right. So on our little wireless uh, devices, those are usually omni. They're a little stick-like, you know, um, and they send out signals in 360 degrees, right? Where, and we don't have a picture of a unidirectional. It focuses the, the wave in a single direction, right? So, so like a what? Satellite. It's like a satellite dish. Yeah, exactly. Just like a satellite dish. A lot of them look very similar to a satellite dish. Um, and they send it out in a single direction. They're more usually higher power than an omnidirectional uh, because you're sending the signal in, in one direction, so you can be more powerful. Um, so I used the omnidirectional on my 100-foot tower to send it out across the city 360 degrees, but then I used unidirectionals at my at the house, the clients or the businesses or wherever you know to, to hit the tower. Right, because they were going towards the tower, right? So that's the use usually of the two, right? Um, but now, if I was go I was also going to be doing the tower to tower, and then I would have used two unidirectionals uh, for that. But I stopped that build um, because a cable company came in and undercut me, and I, ooh, just before I signed that lease. <laughs> but so different antennas. Uh, will get you different uh, for different situations and needs. All right. And of course, your range uh, will <clears throat> depend on the geographical area, right? So I had to have a hundred foot tower, you know, and I could get a five mile easy. I, I did. You know, I probably could have got further, but that was my far farthest link was a five mile link uh, for my tower. Um, but I could have probably gotten ten, but and just never signed anyone up. Uh, but you know, you. The further out you go, the higher up you need to be. Just one, because of the curvature of the earth, uh, but then two, buildings and trees. <laughs> they're, they're the curvature, of the earth. curvature of the earth, yes. The earth was flat. Right, exactly, but it still messes with our Wi Fi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, sir, the earth is flat. It's, it, it's, it's a flat curve. <laughs> <laughs> But all I know is the math works. <laughs> yeah, right. It's a flat curve, exactly. <laughs> all right. Uh, number nine, group three. Range is a geographic area that I'm to know. Uh, or range can reach. Uh, propagation refers to how a wave can travel from one to another. 
So what I do, ideally mean that it will travel in a straight line from the transmitter to its intended receiver. This type of uh, propagation is known as the line of sight. Because the atmosphere is an unguided medium and the path is not always clear, wireless signals usually don't travel in a straight line. And when there is an obstacle in, this, uh, in a signal way, it will either pass through them or absorb into them. Okay, awesome. All right, so right, propagation is how the wave travels from one point to another, right? And like you said, uh, our radio waves don't necessarily go in a straight line. They, you know, they bounce around and, and hit things, and they they go through things, and they're not quite the same when they come through. Um, in fact, actually, we'll just go to the next slide because that'll talk about this. So, group four, slide ten. Yeah. Talk about some of our issues. Describes three issues: uh, fading, attenuation, and interference. Uh, fading is just the signal being disrupted by obstacles, trees, the walls, whatever. Uh, attenuation is the signal getting weaker due to distance. And then interference is your typical noise like a microwave. Okay. All right. So, right. So, we have the fading, attenuation, and interference are different um, issues that can occur, right? Uh, let's see here. And then group five. What what else do we have? Right, absolutely. And this graph here kind of depicts, right? So we have that reflection, right? It bouncing off the ceiling. Right, diffraction is going um, all over, right? You know, um, scattering as well. Um, and so you you have these uh, issues with the signal, right? Just bouncing all around, and we're just constantly bombarded by all these radio waves too. I mean, it's just crazy how much how much we get around here. Um, but this also goes to um, some of the power too. You know, you, sometimes people think that you need to add power, or you know, and a lot of times you actually need to turn power down uh, because you are getting too much noise or too much disruption and reflection that, that is actually causing data data loss or bad signals, right? Um, so uh, some of it's good, you know. So like. Like in this, right, with the reflection going off the ceiling back into the computer room from wherever, um, you know, uh, on their dresser that they had the Wi-Fi. Uh, you know, in this case, it worked out, uh, but you can overpower that too, and it's flooded and it's still be coming through the wall, but halfway, and you know, you can get parts of signals right and get and get really trashed. Um, so all I'm saying is, right. It, the waves travel in all kinds of ways, and power is not always your friend. <laughs> all right, so slide 13, group six. Slide 13 talks about IoT devices and how fast the personal monitoring devices are growing. One of the smartphone devices, the, the locks, the doorbells, the lights, the thermostats, and whatnot. It goes into how connected IoT devices we can get at home area network so you can have everything set up like you were talking about so people can get in yes yes iot is taking over everything right it's everywhere i mean it's it's good and bad right I mean, it's uh, uh amazing what what they have available I, I still don't want my fridge ordering my groceries yet so <laughs> <I don't. laughs> I think that's going too far, but I mean, you can get it, right? They're, they're available, you know. <laughs> right. Your milk, is your milk, yeah. Milk. And they can order it for you now. I mean, yeah, then you're gonna get taxed because your food's unhealthy. Right. right. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know some friends that could use that. You know, hey, man. You know, when, when when did you like buy that cottage cheese? <laughs> 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 uh, 
All right. So then, right, going with the, we also have our wireless personal area networks, right? Our PANs, uh, personal area network, less than 10 meters, right? Um, and so the most common is a wireless personal area network in our home access networks now, right? They're, they're getting big. Um, I would imagine in the future you can't, you won't be able to buy a home without it, right? Uh, maybe not in my lifetime, but it, it'll happen. I know. Where you don't have to buy your own separate router or wire or anything. Right, 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 yeah. I'm just, waiting. I'm just waiting for the Uber home, right? You just the Uber, <laughs> the Uber home, right? You just call up, I need a bed, all right. <laughs> it rotates down, it's all fresh. You go in and go to sleep for that two hours that they get, get you off for work, and then you, <laughs> then you go back, right? <laughs> I laugh, but it may be coming, yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, you know, you, you think about you know, the work in the oil rigs and stuff like that. I mean, it ain't much different, right? <laughs> uh, um, all right, so we are on slide 15, group one. Zigbee is based off of the IEEE 802.15.4 standard of wireless band and it is a low powered and battery conserving short range wireless technology designed to handle small amounts of data and ideal to use in industrial, scientific, and medical or ISM sensors. Internet of things that Zigbee is used in include building automation, HVAC control, automatic meter reading, and fleet management. Compared to Bluetooth, Zigbee is known for its relative simplicity and reliability. It uses an um, 128-bit ABS encryption, which gives Zigbee a higher level of security. Awesome. Outstanding. Yeah, so that's one of the main reasons, right, you'll see Zigbee instead of Bluetooth in our HVAC system. So at least it's a little bit more secure. Um, but it's still kind of scary, right, with certain things. But, you know, they're, they're trying with this to be more industrialized. It, it works in those, um, what, do you, what do you call, um, not climate friendly uh, conditions, right? You know, so where you get hot, cold, ice, whatever, being outdoors, you know, so these, these are more rugged um, and durable uh, for those reasons. So, yeah, so it's a good technology. It's just, you know, like anything else, so, it, you know, it's That'd secure. Like Encore. What's that? That'd be like Encore. Like Encore. <laughs> You're reading your power meter. Yeah, right. They might they might be using Zigbee, right? It could be. I, I don't know exactly what they use, but yeah, something like that, right? Meter reading. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, like any other technology, it's just as secure as you've implemented it and tested it, right? All right. Uh, slide 16, group two. All right. So Z-Wave is a protocol for smartphone devices. It serves two functions, uh, signaling, signaling to manage connections and control data transmitted and commands between devices. A uh, network controller is called the Z-Wave Hub. It can tolerate up to four hops to repeaters, and a range per hop is 100 meters. Awesome, right. So, right, so it's more of a in-home use, right? But uh, 100 meters, I mean, that's, that's, that's what's that? That's that's 300 feet, right? I mean, that's that's more for, you know, I mean, most homes, and then you can do up to 400 meters or 1,200 feet. So, I mean, if you have a home you know, over 1,200 feet, right? <laughs> um, yeah, right, you know, I mean, of every, well, I mean, the, you need it from the center point, so think of, think of diameter. <laughs> do you need, need a home that big? <laughs> This will work for you. <laughs> the American dream, right? Uh, but um, yeah, it all depends on where the hub or controller is, right? So it's 100, 100 meters away from the controller, right? Um, and it, obviously, that's wherever your network connection is. And so, I mean, this, I mean, you can get this to work in almost any any situation, just because of you know you can run networks and then run a connector and hub and all right, so 17 is group three. Bluetooth 
can help with wireless technology used for transmitting fixed and mobile electronic device data over short distances. And there are also by distances, there are different classes of power, of power. The most used are class three, two and one. Class three goes to a maximum distance of one meter. And class two goes to up to 10 meters, which is basically used for like mobile devices, like phones and tablets. And class one goes to up to 100 meters, which is usually for like industrial purposes. Right. I would not want my Bluetooth to go 100 meters. <laughs> uh, well, maybe headphones, but OK. But <laughs> yeah. All right, and then we got the two security risks, right? Um, if you have your Bluetooth on, people can send you, send you things, you know, uh, messages, or actually send you data, right? Have you down, download something, right? So blue jacking or blue snarfing. All right, and then I think this is yeah, this is this is group four. Uh, <laughs> they stole your thunder, man. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute, I got a slide on that. There's basically just three Bluetooth classes: one for industrial purposes, which goes up to 100 meters, then drastically goes to plus two, where it's only up to 10 meters for mobile devices. Right. Then three was rarely used. Yeah, rarely used with one meter, right? Okay. Yeah. All right. So group five, number nineteen. information from sensors. Are typically embedded in the heart rate monitors, GPS devices, and other activity monitoring devices. Uh, we have the example of smart, uh, smart watches that can monitor the activities of athletes. Mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, they also synchronize those data on multiple devices for the same activities, such as a uh, smartwatch, smartphone, and uh, computers. Okay. Excellent. So, right, so our ant, ant plus, right, it basically gathers the tracking information, right? Um, so, um, and like I said, it's useful in heart monitoring and GPS settings and also with uh, athletics, right? So it's a big, a big uh, field in that, I guess. So, uh, all right. All right. And then groups. Six, I guess, is 20. Harp ID or radio frequency identification is a small chip or tag used to transmit, and re uh, transmit information with some using a, a built in battery. There are three types of readers there's ARPT, active reader uh, passive tag, it has to be pulled power from the radio, reader's radio waves to power the transmission. It only works within a few centimeters of the rear, so very, very close. Uh, there's the P, uh, PRAT, the passive rear active tag. has a built-in, has a battery to power the tag's transmission at its time intervals. Uh, they don't need to be in close proximity, usually about 200 meters away. So, and there's also an AP, uh, ARAT, active rear active, active tag, and, uh, an active rear. Interact with a battery, battery power tag. Uh, they're most commonly used for like inventory in like a retail setting. Um, some were, some credit cards actually have some in them. Uh, there's currently a risk with credit cards because people can just if they install them into like a uh, a bank uh, ATM, they can put a sticker on it which will save the information onto the sticker, and they'll just come and grab it. They can also that, do that same thing with like a gas station pump. Right. Definitely right. So RFID tags are very useful and also very scary. And they can also, uh, <laughs> if someone walks up with you with a scanner, they can pair the scan you too. Right. You don't have a, a shielded wallet or something. Right. If you don't have a shielded or wallet. Right. 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 Exactly. So yeah, I mean, it is, it is kind of, kind of scary, right? But they are very beneficial for inventory. I'm not so sold on the credit card 
part. <laughs> but what's that? It's just so you can watch it while it's slapping on everyone. Right. You, you don't have to take it out. Right. I know. I know. Especially but, it'll be in your hand. Never used it in that way. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, like the vending machines will, will take that and your phone. And, yeah. yeah. I mean, um, yeah. So. What's that? Yeah. You just tap tap the card right off. The gold bank is on debit card. Right. I wouldn't do it. I know. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> it, it's scary. It's scary how easy, right? Uh, somebody could come up and. Get your information. Yes, yes, right. Exactly. Right. So. <laughs> I went to a cryptocurrency conference and they said, like, don't ever use biometrics if you want to be secure. Right. <laughs> Everybody thinks they're secure, but they're not. No. Right. All right. Slide 21, group one. Um, pretty much just talked about kind of that. Well, we um, did. Little credit card stuff. Yeah. Um, MFC is uh, near field communication. It's like RFID, but um, it says 10 centimeters right. or less. Um, and then it's, it's like, well, it can only be like 32 kilobits of information. But there, the difference is that it's a peer to peer instead of just one way, like right. scanning like RFID. Right. So, yeah, it's got your credit card information. And, uh, right, it's got a lot of information, right? I mean, 32K is a lot of information that I don't want them having. <laughs> but yes, so. It's right. Okay, awesome. All right, 22 is group two. So wireless USB is based on an ultra wideband, which connects the wired USB 2.0 connections. Uh, ultra wideband radios transmit between 3.1 and 10 megahertz. Good example of a wireless USB connection would be a wireless mouse, which and the red detect movement or right. Awesome. Right. So yeah, it's very, very handy and helpful. I love having my USB mouse. Right. I don't like having a cord. <laughs> uh, at least at home. But uh, so it's it's really nice. But as you can see though, it uses frequencies, right? Um, that have been set up and, and designed for this ultra wide band. Right. So just like any other wireless. All right, so 23, group three. <laughs> so in general, infrared radiation is also called infrared light. The type of light energy infrared radiation, but two of the most obvious sources are the sun and fire. Okay. And also, the eye or uh, collect data to different sensors, and those sensors are used to collect information such as proximity to the device, we're going to talk about phones, mm -hmm. uh, commands from a control device. Right. We're going to talk about uh, a remote control. Right, so for just instance, like this. In a reflection on skin caused by variation in blood flow. We're going to talk about some medical objects. Right. Right, so IR, right? Uh, we, it's just below our visibility, so, and uh, um, we use it a lot in remote control devices, just like our projector here and the one on this slide. Uh, excellent. Um, all right, so 25, group four. Uh, so basically, it's talking about how wireless local area networks only work on the first and second layer of the OC model. And then it talks about how the most popular standards used by the wireless layer networks is Wi-Fi, and that was defined by the IEEE's 802.1 committee. And then, yeah, just a bunch of the notable standards, uh, notable standards for the Wi-Fi, uh, and yeah, 802.11, all the different similar types. Right. 
Okay, right, and then so then 802.11n and later modify the way frames are used at the Mac layer, right? What's that Mac layer? What's that? Yeah. That data link, right? Layer two, right? Right, so, um, right, so our Mac addresses. So it modifies where they send the frames. And so that's why it's a little different on Wi Fi, right, than wired, right? Because the, the layers are a little different at one and two. All right, good job. All right. Uh, this, I didn't give anybody, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> But you can look at the various uh, standards and uh, uh, frequencies and, and their throughput, theoretical throughputs, obviously. You know, we'd all love if we could get our 6.93 gigs, right? <laughs> um, but I would highly doubt we get anywhere close to 6 gigs uh, throughput on our AC. But never know. You know, if anybody, you know, sets up a gaming party, you know, PC to PC that's wireless to wireless, you might actually get close. Might. <laughs> All right, 27. Group five. Basically what I got out of it was that uh, the 802 does a different kind of MAC address mm -hmm. services, and it's substantially larger than the Ethernet. Also, the 802.11 uses half duplex signaling. They can either transmit yeah, or receive. See. They can't do can't do both simultaneously unless they have one transceiver, more than one transceiver. Right, 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 right. If they had two, two um, unidirectionals and two um, transmit, yeah, two APs, right? Something, yeah. I mean, there's a way you could probably work it out. And you'd have two separate connections. It would be difficult to do it. <laughs> uh, but yes, yeah, so it, it appends a 48-bit physical address like the Ethernet does, you know, because the Ethernet uses the MAC address. So this is appending that um, and simulating that so the, the frames are similar to Ethernet. All right, 28, group six. So my slide is feedbacks off of this and it has to do with the CSMA slash CA which stands for carrier sensible access with avoidance. So I think it has to do with, with what he was saying they only send or receive. Mm -hmm. So this is a way around that way I would understand it. Well it, it's still um, so to envision a network with 10 well, this room here, say we were all wirelessly and we all wanted to access the access point, right? Mm -hmm. So um, even though we can only transmit or receive at one time, right, only one of us can be sending it at one time. So it's got to take it and really fast and handle it, right? Mm -hmm. So this is, uh, we're, we're sensing that somebody's sending a signal, right, right? Uh, and then to try to avoid the collision, right? You know, um, it's that carrier sense multiple axis collision avoidance, right? It's trying to avoid it, right? But it, but it, there's no guarantee that, okay, I don't hear anybody, I'm gonna send it, but the, you know, you and Dan could send it at the same time and have a collision, right? Mm. Right, but you're, you're trying to avoid it by waiting for the chattering to stop, right? Uh, that, that's that carrier sense, right? So when Versus- When did open up the time frame? Huh? When did it just choose the time frame? Well, then, right. So when you right when you collision when you collide, right, then you ran you each randomly t select a, a time frame to retry, which should be different. Okay. And then right, which versus the request to send, clear to send, which is right. Oh, <laughs> um, that is uh, it's an exchange with the source node that that requests an exclusive right to communicate. Right with the access point. So it's just kind of like saying, I have something I need to I need it. attention, and it's asked for access, the, the access point says, okay, right. here you go, here's your, I, you got my attention, Right. go ahead and send. send. And that's, that way, uh, it kind of blocks out everything else right. at that point. To make Hopefully. Sure that, yeah, that that data transfer takes place and right. it goes, uh, gets there all the way. 
Nowhere right. Else. Right. So it, it takes yours regardless of anybody else is sending. Right. Right. So then this is just showing those two. Uh, actually, I think it's uh, uh, with the optional R. So that, the top one is just a CSMA, CA, right? Um, and then the bottom one is technically both, right? So you're, you're, you're waiting, but then you're also requesting. Is it okay if I send it? And yes, it is, right? All right. Okay. Does that make sense to everybody? I mean, that's uh, all right. So we're at slide thirty. Me two. So association is a function of the max sublayer described in the eight hundred two eleven standard. In this layer, the packet is exchanged between the computer and the access point in order to gain access to the internet. So, uh, wireless node scans the surroundings for access points using active or passive scanning methods. In active scanning, the wireless client takes the initiative. The computer transmits special frames known as probes to available channels. And then in passive scanning, the AP takes the initiative. And a wireless enabled computer listens to available frequencies for special signals known as beacon frames. Beacon frames. Excellent. All right. So, which that translates into uh, SSID is a unique character string um, in beacon frame information, right? So, this is the SSID, that beacon frame, right? Uh, configured in an access point as better security and easier network management than the basically ad hoc mode. <laughs> um, so everybody knows what an SSI, SSID is, right? They use that for wireless and right, how you gain access to the wireless. Um, does everybody know that in most, most instances you can actually hide that and not transmit it, right? So it is something that you, for security reasons, you don't have to transmit it. Um, but that's lesser known. And then the basic service set, the VSS, right? Um, is a group of stations identifier. So, right, if you had multiple access points, right, you could set a group uh, identifier, right? That's your basic server set identifier for a group of stations. And then you have the extended service set, uh, which is a group of access points connected to the same LAN, but it allows roaming. Which I wish our campus did, but you know. Um, so you, you know, if you were to connect to a wireless uh, uh, ESS, right, you could walk. You know, say say this campus had that, you could walk from building to building or or room to room, and you wouldn't have to reauthenticate. Most of the time, it would work. Um, but if you don't have the ESS extended service set, right. Um, it's not. It's not going to work. You're, you're basically rejoining as you go. Um, so, would you route. wire? Would you wire a router to a router? Would you? Would well, that be able to work? A router to a router. Uh, you're you're uh, you're using more uh, enterprise level grade equipment. You know, okay. Yeah, that has this functionality. Right, because your home routers aren't going to be able to, you're not going to be able to join them into a group because they're not going to have that functionality. Right. Right. So, uh, but it's technically that's, you know, the, the router, your home wireless router, I mean, that's an access point, but you have enterprise level ones that have this feature. There, there's not, not much difference between them other than the firmware. Yeah. Just, yeah, the, just the ability that they, they can communicate or cover a certain area and, um, they talk with the servers, you know, and so they authenticate, right? Um, in fact, you'll do a little bit of that with our, ra our radius lab. Um, you'll actually have the wireless access point authenticate uh, to the user from a server. So, uh, and then this is just showing your basic service set, right? Just a group of computers, you know, around one AP, bless you. Um, here is just, uh, you know, the extended, or it's not the extended, but it's the uh, bunch of base stations, right? There's multiples, room 1 and 13, room 12, 14, 
Um, but then the outer circle is saying that there, if they were tied with an ESS, then you could move from room 12 to 13 and 14 and not have to log out. It would, it would just, it would stay connected. All right. Um, I am going to stop there. Um, so we're pretty right on time. I'm impressed. So I thought this exercise would take a, all, a lot more time than it did. So um, right now is the time for working on the lab so that we got the wireless lab that I, I just assigned you. Um, and uh, so you use this time for that as well as discussion boards or whatever. Um, times that you have for that. But that is all I have for the lecture. If you have any questions, you know, come see me and or